Uh, today, uh, we are considering the numerical methods for solving optimization, specific the nonlinear programming problem. In the last class, I discussed about the classical optimization technique for solving nonlinear optimization problem. But uh, there was one restriction for that, that function must be at least twice differentiable within the domain of definition. But uh, where the function is discontinuous, is not defined within the whole feasible space, how to develop the optimization technique for that. The numerical uh, technique, numerical method is most popular in that case and numerical methods are applicable for constraint as well as unconstrained optimization problems, specifically nonlinear programming problems. And numerical method is mainly based on the searching procedure and it searches for the local optimal in the feasible region. Now, let us consider one and this is mostly iterative process. We start from a point on the feasible space and we move to the optimal point after certain iterations. Now, let us consider a hypothetical two variable nonlinear programming problem and uh, just I will discuss how the iterative process run on this problem to get the optimal solution for the given problem. For this, let us consider one uh, problem that is of two variables x1 and x2. And this is let us consider in general the constraint optimization problem that is why we are considering there are three constraints, constraint 1, constraint 2 and constraint 3 and this is the defined feasible space for us. These are all nonlinear in nature all the constraints and this is forming the feasible space here. Now, if we have a function which has to be optimized, let us consider the minimization of the objective function, where objective function is a circular is a circle. That is why for different value of the function, the it takes different, different place in the feasible space. If this is one of the one of the place where functional value f is equal to say c1 where function is a this is a part of the uh, circle. There is another since this is a minimization problem we will try to minimize the objective function f here. That is why we will just find out the space where the objective function is minimum. Now, this is the next this is another position where functional value is a c2 in that way we can minimize function further and further. How long that depends on when the functional value is out of the feasible space that time we will just conclude our journey that is why I can say this is the space where the functional value is the minimum and this is the corresponding optimal point here. Now, let us consider this is the functional value is C1, this is C2, this is C3 this is c4, this is functional value is c5 and there is further if function moves here then functional value is c6a and this is the center for this and we it is clear that if I just move to functional value at c6 that will be out of the feasible space that is why we need to stop our iterative process if we start from f is equal to c1 it will move to c2 it will move to c3 that means we are getting better and better functional value. Once we are reaching to this point functional value is coming is equal to c5 and this is the corresponding optimal point. If this is the process for us how really we have started our uh, started to search the feasible space to see this is a searching technique I am now discussing with you. Now, this is first starting point for me this is the point which is within the feasible space since say this is the point is x1. Now, we will move to x2 this is our next optimal point our searching mechanism will be such that x1 will move to x2 then it will move to x3 in the next iteration it will move to x4 in the third iteration then it will move to x5 that is the corresponding optimal point where x5 is the optimal point for the given problem. 
Okay, this is the searching technique for us. How really we did it? If we just see the whole mechanism here, we can see that let me write down the whole iterative process within a as an algorithm. We start our iteration with an initial point with and initial point x1. Now, x1 can move in any direction here, x1 can move in the right, it can go in the north, it can go in the south in this way. Now, we need to find that direction which give us the better value for the objective, not only that we will, re will be restricted within the, within the feasible space. That is why one of that possibility is x2. If I move from x1 to x2, that means we are, we have decided that I will move to th through this direction, this is one part. And the second part is that the thing will be such that, that if I move from x1 to x2, there is a step length. I will jump from here to here. That is why step 2 for this iterative process would be find a suitable direction. Let us consider the first initial point is x i instead of x 1 because I will start from 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. I am making the iterative process more general. Find a suitable direction s i and appropriate step length. lambda i. Once it is being selected s i and lambda i is being selected we will move to step 3. How we will go for the new op, new approximation. of the optimal point that is x i plus 1. I am starting from i th step, I am moving to x i i plus 1. What is the formation of the x i i plus 1? It should be x i plus lambda i and s i, where lambda i and s i are the, we have chosen the suitable direction and the corresponding step, step length in the i th step. Once we are reaching to x i i plus 1, our next task would be to find out that whether x i plus 1 is optimal or not. How to check the optimality? There are certain, uh, there are certain uh, mechanism for different uh, problem. I will discuss further on that. That is why we will check whether x i plus 1 is optimal or not. If optimal, stop the iterative process. That means we will stop our movement. If it is not, then we will repeat from step 2 to 4 again and again, unless otherwise we are reaching to optimal point. Whatever we ha I have written here, the whole algorithm let me explain with this problem again. I am starting from x1 i is equal to 1 with suitable direction s, uh, s1 and the appropriate step, step length lambda 1. I am moving to x2 that means x2 is equal to x1 plus lambda 1 into s1 and we have checked s2 is the optimal is one of the one of the feasible point, but that is not the optimal because there is far there is a possibility for further improvement. That is why we are repeating the process, we are moving to step 2 again, we again we are selecting the S2, the suitable direction and the appropriate step, step length lambda 2 and we are getting the next, the point that is X3 as X2 plus lambda 2 into X, S2, again we are moving to X4, then we are moving to X5, X5 is certainly optimal because if I just uh, proceed further, I will be out of the feasible space. That is the whole, the whole searching mechanism is based on this appropriate procedure. Now, there is certain thing to be say, discussed here. The efficiency of this uh, searching technique is totally dependent on the proper selection for the step length lambda i and the direction si. Otherwise, if the, if 
the selection for lambda i and s i is such that that uh, it is uh, either it is um, it is uh, guiding me to phi move from the feasible region to out of the feasible region otherwise this could be another uh, thing it I can mention here if the step length is very small the number of iterations will be more. That is why finding a proper step length we will, redu will reduce my uh, computational procedure that is why this could be general iterative process. Now, this is the general thing I have this I am discussing this is a um, numerical uh, technique we are uh, now discuss I am discussing for the constraint and as well as for unconstrained nonlinear programming pro problem also it is more applicable. Now, to now let us now start our discussion with the single variable unconstrained nonlinear programming problem that is the most uh, simplest case for this that is why I am moving to the next part that is the numerical method for solving unconstrained nonlinear programming where single variable decision variable is involved there that is why I am moving to single variable optimization technique. There is certain procedure for solving a single variable nonlinear programming problem where there is no constraint that is why we are dealing with single variable optimization NLP that is a nonlinear programming problem which is unconstrained. There are several techniques for solving it. If I just refer my previous lecture, there are certain analytical procedure that is mostly dependent on the on the class that is more specifically that is a classical optimization techniques and there are certain other methods also that is the numerical methods which I am discussing today. Now, numerical methods can also be divided into two category. One category is the region elimination technique. And another category is the interpolation method. I will discuss each and every methods with specific example and corresponding algorithms. Now, region elimination technique again there are several techniques are available. Most simplest technique is unrestricted search, unrestricted search procedure and another procedure is the exhaustive search. The next one is the dichotomous search. Next is the interval halving technique or bisection. Next is the Fibonacci method. Then is the golden section method. All these methods are the these are mainly can be categorized as a region elimination technique. What is the meaning of that? I will tell you later on. Now, coming to the interpolation method, there are uh, two types of interpolation method. One method is uh, dependent on the derivative of the function that is why we can name it as a derivative based techniques and the other method which is not depending on the derivative of the function. Now, in this category non derivative methods non derivative based methods the one of the most popular method is the quadratic interpolation technique, but for the derivative based techniques one of that is the cubic interpolation technique then is the Newton method, then is the quasi-Newton, then is the second method and we are using these uh, few methods in our numerical 
numerical techniques also numerical uh, numerical problems also now these are the methods i will discuss i will discuss one by one but if i just move to the region i will start my lecture with the regional elimination technique now if i just move here i we could see that there are several methods but all the methods are having its own advantages and disadvantages few methods are very 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 easy to compute computational process is very simple but we will see that the method is not efficient that's why whenever we are discussing the searching mechanism searching technique for solve for getting the optimal solution one part is very important for us we need to check the efficiency of the corresponding searching technique now in this methods dichotomous interval having fibonacci golden section method this methods are being one of the we can categorize as a sequential search procedure because sequential search procedure it utilizes the information generated in the previous iteration in placing the subsequent iterations in the iterative process that's why we are uh, now we will discuss the region elimination technique and most specifically the unrestricted search method in the next now region elimination technique is mostly based on one of the most uh, important assumption that is the function must be unimodal in the specified domain of definition that's more important for the region elimination technique that's why let me write down the assumption for this for the region elimination technique is that the function function means the objective function i i mean to say because there is no constraint for the corresponding optimization problem and the function is uh, for the function there is a domain of definition and we are assuming that function is unimodal in the specified domain of definition what's the definition of the unimodal that would be our next task to learn within the specified domain of definition now whenever the function def, domain of definition means that is the domain of the corresponding decision variable and we are dealing with a single variable that's why describing the unimodal defin unimodal definition is much easier for us if the function is multimodal multimodal means the function is having several peaks or several values several maximas or minimas within a within the specified domain we will just subdivide the parts of the domain in such a way that the function is unimodal in the corresponding in the respective parts and we will search for the optimal solution within that specific region where the function is unimodal and unimodality assumption will lead to, will lead to the conclusion that always we will find out the local optimal in the given range that's why let us now define the unimodal function for example if i just draw the graph it will be clear to you for example this is the domain of fine definition it's starting from a this is the this is our decision variable axis and this is the corresponding objective function f and the function is defined from a to b from the figure it's very clear that function is having only one minimum at this point that's why we can say the function is unimodal with, with this in this in this range that's why formally let us introduce the definition of the unimodality a function fx is said to be unimodal if unimodal certainly on the interval a to b if if it is monotonic in either side monotonically decreasing in this in the left part and the monotonically increasing in the right part on either side and x star that is that is my x star x star is the optimal point in the, within the interval
if it is satisfying the following conditions. within the interval and uh, monotonic either as an extra is the optimal solution then if f x 1 is greater than f x 2 what is f x 1 and what is f x 2 let us consider this is f x 1 this is the corresponding x 1 in the decision variable space and this is the corresponding x 2 in the decision variable in the decision variable space that is the domain of definition, then we could see f x 1 is greater than f x 2, then this implies that optimal solution must exist within x 1 to b. But optimal solution cannot be within from within a to x 1. All right. And the second condition, if let me take another case, function is this way, this is the domain of definition from A to B, this is my x1 and this is my x2, certainly the optimal point this is x star for us. If f x1 is lesser than f x2, this implies that x star must be within a 2 x 2 and the other condition is that the optimal point cannot be within a x 1 to b x 2 to b sorry. This is the condition for the unimodality that is why because the function is having only single optimal point in this region and this is monotonic in either side if I just move from here to here this is this decreasing this is increasing if x1 is greater than x2 that we have written that the optimal solution b will be in the part from x1 to b it cannot be from a to x1 and if the f x1 in this case is lesser than f x2 then certainly the optimal point will be from a to x2 it cannot be from x2 to b because there is only one minimum point within the definition. Now there is another definition is that f is strictly unimodal if the function is unimodal this is one of the condition. And the second condition is that there does not exist any sub interval within the range a to b where the function is having constant value. Then only we can say the function is strictly unimodal. Now this is the definition altogether regarding the unimodal function. Now I am moving to the ne next what is the region elimination strategy we are adopting for region el elimination technique that is the part I am discussing now that is why we will move to the next that is the region elimination strategy we will adopt in general for any region elimination technique which are being listed in uh, my previous slide. The region elimination strategy is mostly based on the definition is mostly based on the assumption that the function is unimodal in the given range. Now let us uh, start our discussion for the minimization problem and we are assuming that function is unimodal and not only that function is having one minimum point within the domain of definition that is why we are assuming the function f we need to minimize f of x where x is in between a to b and we are assuming that function is unimodal this is the assumption for us function is unimodal and x star is the corresponding optimal point that is the minimum point where x star is in between a to b. As I have discussed about the iterative process that is why the process is mainly based on the technique is that 
we will start from a gaze point we will start from an initial point from where we will start our journey and we will we will move to the next improved approximation for the corresponding optimal point with some iterative process and that iterative process is based on this region elimination technique that is why I am discussing now the with the thing is that such so starting with an initial point starting with the initial gas point and we will move to a sequence of improved approximations. So, that let us consider that x 1 and x 2 there are two points within the domain of definition where x 1 is lesser than x 2. Now, once we are moving to the next optimal what is the strategy we are following is that if f x 1 is greater than f x 2 then minimum must lie that is x star must lie within x 1 to b. Just from the definition of the unimodality it comes that is why in the next iteration we will just restrict ourselves within the region from x 1 to b. We will start our process by taking the initial the initial interval that is that is called the initial uh, interval of uncertainty from a to b and we will see if f x 1 there are two points we will take within the region. If we see x 1 f x 1 is greater than f x 2 then we are sure that the minimum must lie within x 1 to x b x 1 to b that is why we will just discard the region we will discard the interval a to x 1 in the next iteration. But if it is the other case if f x 1 is lesser than f x 2 then minimum must lie within a to x 2 that is why in the next iteration we will just discard the reach discard the interval x 2 to b. We will eliminate the region and if we see the other case if f x 1 is equal to f x 2 then certainly the minimum will lie in between x 1 and x 2 because the function is unimodal. I can just draw a graph in this case. For example, this is the graph for me, this is x 1, this is corresponding x 2 and from the figure it is very clear that f x 1 is equal to f x 2 and minimum is in between this and this and in this case we will just eliminate in the next iteration, eliminate the uh, intervals certainly from a to x 1 and x 1 to x 2 to b all right and we will restrict ourselves within x 1 to x 2 again we will take two points here we will just see whether one at one point functional value is greater than or less than the other one or not we will just eliminate the corresponding interval in that way we will proceed and for proceed further and further and the beauty of this region elimination strategy is that in every time we are discarding a part of the interval so that our searching region will be lesser than the previous iteration that is the technique for us. Now, let us start our discussion with the unrestricted search technique that is one of the basic region elimination technique and we are discussing now unrestricted search search mechanism. As you know for uh, any searching technique as I have discussed there are two things one is the direction and another is the step length and we are discussing the most general unrestricted search technique more simpler unrestricted search technique with fixed step length. And the direction certainly since we are considering the single variable optimization that is why we are restricted to move to in the real line that is why if I just start from our journey from one of the point in the real line either I can move to the right or I can move to the left. If I move to the right then the searching direction would be plus sign 
and if I just move to the left the searching direction will be minus that is why either I will just jump from one point to the other point with the step size plus lambda or we will with the step size minus lambda. This part I will discuss now let me just write down the corresponding algorithm of the unrestricted search technique. Here also the same thing I will discuss the whole searching unrestricted search technique and the other things with some example in the next. Search with an initial guess point or the trial point x i. I can start from 1, 2, 3 etcetera that is why start with i is equal to 1. Next step, obtain the new approximation how with the same technique that x i plus 1 is equal to x i let me take it capital X, x i plus lambda i into s i. Now, let us consider let us note in this case that s i is equal to plus 1 or minus 1 and lambda i is equal to lambda for all steps because we are considering the fixed step size lambda here. Now, we are moving to the next that is why x 1 is going to x 2 how either it is x 1 plus lambda or x 1 minus lambda and we will check the optimality. How to check the optimality? Checking optimality means we will just check whether there is any possibility for the improved objective functional value or not. That means we will just check whether we are getting the better objective functional value within by considering the corresponding domain of definition that is the corresponding range of the decision variable. Now, if I just move from one in initial guess point to the other point, I will just uh, check whether f x i is greater than f x i plus 1 or not. If f x i is greater than f x i plus 1 that means, we are getting be better functional value. Since we are considering the minimization problem that is why that is why we will we will prefer the better minimum that is the lesser functional value that is why x i plus 1 is most preferable for me. And we will just move to the move to the next step with s i is equal to plus 1 and how we will repeat if I just write down the algorithm I can write it down in this way repeat step 2 with s i is equal to plus 1 until f x i plus 1 is greater than f x i that means we are getting we are not getting improved approximation in that case all right. If it is the other case that is f x i is lesser than f x i plus 1 then we will repeat the process repeat step 2 with s i is equal to minus 1. How long the same condition until f x i plus 1 is greater than f x i. That is why in the previous case I can say x i plus 1 is equal to x i plus lambda. In the second case we will consider x i plus 1 is equal to x i minus lambda that is the consideration in the next case. That means we are moving to the left because if I move to the right we will get the unimproved approximations. All right, And if I just see we are mostly re dependent on the region elimination strategy I have just discussed in the previous case. And one thing I must again mention here we are considering that function only in the unrestricted search where the function is unimodal in the given domain of definition. If the function is multimodal in the similar case we will just consider the uh, we will subdivide the interval into different parts so that the function is unimodal in the respective parts and we will proceed in that way. Now, there can be another op 
possibility that f x i is equal to f x i plus 1. That means, that function is uh, the, the third condition for the region elimination strategy that function is having minimum within x i and x i plus 1. That is why we will start again our uh, we will start our procedure from step 2 again. Okay? That means, minimum is within x 1 x i rather to x i plus 1 and we will start our journey in that way. That means, if this is the case, this is my x i, this is my x i plus 1 and I know the minimum is here that is why we will discard this region and that region again we will take a guess point here. We will move either in the right or in the left according to the condition whether we are getting better functional value or not and with these two conditions separately we will move to the next and next and we will proceed further we will repeat the process until we until and otherwise we are not getting any better functional value. Let me explain this procedure with the simple example in the next. We are considering a simple example here. Consider for problem of minimize minimization again, and we are trying to minimize f x that is x into x minus 4, that is a nonlinear function of a single variable x, and here it is given that x is in between 0 to 4. 0 to 4 that is the domain of definition and uh, it is also given that the function is unimodal. If I draw the graph I will see the function is unimodal within the range 0 to 4 otherwise it is given to us and it is also given that start with the initial guess point or the trial point as 1, start with x 1 is equal to 1 and the step size lambda is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 alright. If this is the case we will just uh, do the entire thing, we will start from x 1 this is my 0 to 4 and this is my 1. If I start from x 1, let us see what is the functional value at 1. The functional value at 1 is certainly minus 3. That is why my I know that I have to move, I have to jump to the next point with the step size point 1, but I do not know in which direction I will move. I can move in the left direction, I can move in the right direction as well. If I move in the right direction, I will see whether we are getting better functional value or if I move in the left direction, we are getting better functional value. That is why let me take two points in either side of 1 that is we are considering point 0.9 x equal to point 0.9 and we could see that the functional value is coming minus 2.79 and if I just move to 1.1 we could see that we are getting the value. Then what is the conclusion for us? The conclusion is that if I move to the left, then we are getting the functional value which is higher than the functional value at 1. That means and the function is unimodal. That is why the minimum cannot lie in between 0 to 0 0.9. I am sure for that. That is why I will move to the right hand side because in the right hand side we could see that if I just move to a 1.1 the functional value at 1.1 is minus 3.19 that means it is better value than the 1 value that is why if I move further from 1.1 there is a possibility that we will get the better value for the function f x better in the sense that function is minimization better means we will get the lesser functional value that is more acceptable in this case alright that is why 
we can conclude that minimum must lie within 1 to 4 that is the conclusion for us. We are discarding the region, we are eliminating the region from 0 to 1 in the next case and we are, we are moving to the moving further that for that thing the whole information can be tabulated in this way just see. The first step we are considering x1 as 1, x2 as 1.1. This is the corresponding functional value minus 3 and minus 3.19. Certainly, fx1 is uh, fx2 is lesser than fx1, that is why the condition fxi is lesser than fxi plus 1, this is not fulfilled, and uh, that is why we have written no, that is why we will move to the next. Where to move from 1.1? We will move to with the step size 0 0.1, we will move to the right, right that is 1.2. That is why just see the next. The second step from 1.1 we are moving to 1.2 for this thing the functional value is changing from minus 3.19 to minus 3.36. That means we are getting better functional value that is why there is a possibility to proceed further. Let us see what is happening in the next. We are again moving from 1.1 to 1.3. 1.3. And just see we are getting better functional value that means the lesser functional value in this case. Again there is a possibility to improve further and further. Let us see what is happening. We are moving from 1.3 to 1.4 better functional value. 1.4 to 1.5 again the better functional value. We started our we started our journey from minus 3 and we see we are getting better and better functional value and reaching to the functional value as minus 3.84. Again we are moving to the next from 1.5 to 1.6 better functional value from for the next 1.6 to 1.7 better functional value 8 better functional value in this way if I just move to the point 1.8 to 1.9 we could see the functional value is coming again better minus 4.0. But if I just move from 1.9 to 2.0, we see that the functional value is now lesser value, the higher value. That is why we will stop our journey at 1.9 and we will declare that the optimal point, the minimum point must be 1.9 and the corresponding functional value is minus 4.0, alright. This is the case. Now, we will stop our iterative process. That is why we could say that x star is equal to 1.9 and the corresponding functional value is fx star is equal to minus 4.0 and this is my conclusion. Whatever logic we have adopted for the minimization problem, if I just consider the maximization problem, we will just adopt the reverse logic. We will, we will conclude that we are getting the better uh, functional value if the functional value is increasing instead of decreasing, okay. That is the case for us. Coming to the next. We will move to the next that is the unrestricted search technique with accelerated step size. So now, just look at this table. How many iterations we had to perform? Here we had to perform 10 iterations. Now that is why one advantage is that it is this process is easy to implement. We can either we can do it manually or we can write a simple program to just uh, to get the iterate to just um, to implement the iterative process so that within 10 steps we will reach to the optimal solution. That is why as an advantage of this method I can mention that it is easy to implement. But there is a disadvantage. Disadvantage is that selection of the initial guess point is more important for us. If the initial guess point is given to us that is fine. If it is not given, if I select randomly within the region 0 to 4, there is a chance that uh, I need to do more number of iterations. 
that is why selection of initial guess point is much more important thing for us. Not only that, selection of step length though we are considering the fixed step length, but still if the step length is not, not proper one there is a chance that I will be out of the optimal point within, within fewer steps. Now that is why it may happen that we will start our journey from the initial guess point and we will just move to with the, with the corresponding step length, but it may happen that we will far from optimal point if the step length is very high. But if the step length is very small number of iterations will be more. That is why if we have some mechanism so that if I see the functional value is increasing and increasing further and further with the step length point 1. If there is a mechanism that I will change the step length in between from point 1 I will move to point 2. Then in that case instead of 1.1 to 1.2 I will just directly move from 1.1 to 1.3 alright. In that case if I see the functional value is uh, again better one I will just proceed with the same step length or with the accelerated step length so that the number of iterations we could reduce. Then the searching procedure will be much more efficient that is why we are having the next stage of uh, searching technique that is called the unrestricted search with the unaccelerated step length. What is the thing is that in the process we can increase the step size, it can be doubled, it can be tripled or more as long as the functional value is improving. That is why let us consider the same example here and let us see whether with the accelerated step size we are getting better optimal or not. And this is a case for this. We are uh, starting with the step length lambda is equal to 0.1. Now we are moving from 1.1 to 1.1, 1.0 to 1.1. This is my starting point 1, uh, it was given there. Now functional value is better. That is why there is a chance to for improvement. Now I am increasing the step length instead of 0.1 I am making it 0.2. Then 1.1 to 1.3 we are getting better functional value. Let me do a try. We are changing the step length again from 0.2 to 0.3. That is why 1.3 will move to 1.6. Again we are getting better functional value. Again we are changing the step length 0.4. We could see that we are getting better functional value. I can move to the next with 0.5 and we could see that from 2.0 it is just jumping to 2.5 and we are getting not better functional value, we are getting the higher value of the objective function that is why we have to stop here. That is why if I just stop our uh, searching procedure we will declare in the present situation is that 2.0 is the corresponding 2.0 is the corresponding functional value for it alright. But one thing it is clear that there could be we have increased the step length from, from 0.4 to 0.5 in between the optimal value we are uh, missing. That is why we can revise our procedure in that way that we will reduce the step length. Instead of taking 0.4, we can take it 0.04. In that way, we will move further and further. We can fine tune our optimal solution. In that way, we can uh, develop the unrestricted search technique very nicely. Okay. This is all together unrestricted search. Now, we are moving to the next that is a little bit complicated than the unrestricted search technique, that is the exhaustive search technique. The exhaustive search procedure is mainly based on this 
assumption again the function must be unimodal within the def domain of definition this is my func functional value certainly the minimum is lying here this is the domain of definition a to b and uh, the process is such that we will just divide the whole interval of uncertainty initial interval of uncertainty into n pa n plus 1 equally spaced sub intervals that is why I will go to x 1 then x 2 then x 3 in this way we will go to x n. How many parts are there 1 2 3 4 up to n plus 1 that is why initial interval of uncertainty in divided into n plus 1 equally spaced sub intervals then we will see the functional value at each and every point of the given within the given range if minimum occurs here is the minimum for us minimum occurs at x k then we will say that final interval of uncertainty will be x k minus 1 to x k x k plus 1. Final interval of uncertainty would be from x k minus 1 to x k plus 1. Then what is the corresponding length for it? Certainly the corresponding length would be 2 into b minus a divided by n plus 1 all right. Otherwise if I say that L0 is the initial interval of uncertainty that is from a to b where the current a to b no actually this is the length of the initial length if I consider the length of the initial interval of uncertainty a b as equal to b minus a then l k can be written as 2 into l 0 divided by n plus 1 all right. Now, our uh, next thing is that we have to find out the functional value at each and every point where the function is uh, functional value is minimum we will stop our thing. Now, there are few things to be discussed in this regard that in the exhaustive search we have seen that we have to subdivide the interval into n plus 1 equally spaced sub intervals that is why our next task is to find n that is more important the value of n is totally depends on the fact that what accuracy I want regarding the optimal solution shall I shall I allow the 10 percent error or shall I allow the 5 percent error on the initial interval of uncertainty depending on that we will select the corresponding n that is why there is a measure for any region elimination technique that is called the efficiency of the efficiency of the searching technique rather the measure of efficiency this is also named at the, uh, as the reduction ratio this is is equal to ln by l0 that means after n iterations what is the interval of uncertainty and what was the previous interval uncertainty depending on that we will select the that is why there is a part I have to discuss further though we are discussing several searching procedures we will discuss in the next that which method is more efficient and that is that will totally depend on the reduction ratio value. And uh, here I am just concluding my lecture today. I will start my next lecture with this exhaustive search procedure with some specific example. Thank you.